vibrant, vibrant, vibrant music teaching. Proven and practical tips, strategies, and ideas for music teachers. This is episode 64 of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. I'm Nicola Canton, and in this show, I'll share five creative ways that you can start your lessons. Welcome back, beautiful teachers, and a special welcome to all new listeners as well. I hope you enjoy the show. We're talking today about creative ways to start a lesson. This is one of the simplest tweaks that you can make to your teaching that makes an enormous difference to how your lessons run, how much creativity you get into them in general, and how enjoyable they are for your students. Because if you start a lesson off with a creative activity, it removes that awful conversation that we often end up defaulting to just by default, just just because it just comes out, just habit that we ask students how their practice went that week. And it's not that we shouldn't want to know, but I don't believe that that should be the first thing that comes out of our mouth because it gives this impression that we're only interested in whether they've put in the work, whether they've behaved themselves during the week, right? And maybe they had a bad week, maybe they had a good week. But it's great to get get started with something more musical and give them some warm-up time before we dive into the practice conversation, if we do at all. It also gives them this no-pressure environment. And I remember from when I had lessons as a child, you always felt like you were being tested. I always felt like I was being tested right from the get-go. Whether we started with pieces or scales, it was something I was supposed to have practiced. And whether I had or I hadn't, there was this huge pressure to perform straight away. And, you know, I'd probably cycled to my lesson and my hands were cold. I was a bit nervous and I hadn't warmed up, all of these things. And so it gets this lesson off to a poor start because I can't possibly perform all that well when I've just walked in the door. So doing some kind of warm up is always a good idea. And I think a creative warm up is the best choice because if there's no wrong answer, if you're doing something like improvisation, or if it's just a bit of fun and it's not related to what they were practicing in any in-depth way, then it removes that pressure completely and allows them just to get into the flow of the lesson and get things off to a positive start. So this episode was inspired by the fact that I'm going to be doing a challenge all about teaching creatively and adding creativity into everything you teach, not just the warm-up, although that's what we're talking about today here on the podcast. If you want more about teaching creatively, I suggest you sign up to that challenge. It is totally free and you can sign up for it at vibrantmusicteaching.com slash birthday because it's actually a celebration of VMT's second birthday, which is coming up in the middle of September. So sign up for that challenge for more creative stuff. But today we're talking about these creative warm ups and I've got five ideas to share with you about ways you can start your lessons creatively. Number one. I'm calling wordless improvisation. And I really want to challenge you to do this as wordlessly as you can. And I'll be challenging myself to do this when my lessons start up again as well. So the challenge is to have your student come in the door and say as few words as you can to them before you sit down together at the piano. And if you can say absolutely nothing and just be sitting at the piano when they come in and gesture for them to join you, even better. And I want you to pick a simple, chord progression for you to play and just start it up and indicate to the student where they should play. So, you know, just tap on the bench to indicate that they should sit beside you and point to the black keys if that's enough to communicate to them that they're supposed to play something on the black keys. Now, if you've never improvised together before, they're not going to get the picture, so you might have to use a few words to explain what's going on. But if you can do it wordlessly, I want to challenge you to do so. So you play your chord progression on the black keys, say, or in C major or some simple scale, something that they know well and indicate to them what they should do and just make some music together and say nothing about it. That's your warm up. Isn't that such a lovely start to the lesson? Don't you kind of wish that all of your lessons had started that way? I do. Yes, it would have made me a little bit nervous in the beginning if I hadn't done it before. But if you continue with that, if you persist with it, it's such a lovely way to say hello to your students. So try to give it a go. 
Number two is a listening exercise, second creative idea. So for this one, I call it painting in the air. So you're going to put on some music, something nice and expressive. I come back again and again for some reason to the Nutcracker Suite. There's something really lovely about those pieces of music. Possibly it's just because I have a soft spot for it, having loved that music and that ballet growing up. But I come back to that again and again. That's a go-to one for me. Any favourite piece that has a nice expressive melody in it would be great. And you're just going to ask your student to paint the shape that they hear in the air and you do it with them. So it's going to look a little bit silly and that's kind of the whole point. Pretend you have a paintbrush and paint up high for the high notes and down low for the low notes. It's really as simple as that. Move quickly if it's moving quickly. Jump up and down in the air if you want to get some wiggles out. Generally just paint the shapes that you hear and you'll wake up your students' ears You'll get them into the groove of the lesson. And again, it's a great way to say hello to your student. The next idea I'm calling a half speed relay. For this one, you are going to take out one of the pieces that they were supposed to be practicing, but you're not going to ask them to perform it. What you're going to do, if you have a second piano, you sit at it. If you don't, just uh, sit together with your student and play in different octaves and tell them that you're going to play one bar or one measure of their piece. And you want them to play it after you, directly after you, at half the speed that you did. Okay? So you should play, the teacher, you, should play at the speed that they're currently performing at. So if they're only playing it at half the speed it's going to be in the end, then you played at that speed and they're doing a quarter of the final tempo, right? So you play a bar, they play a bar, and go back and forth like that. You can just do a section of their piece if they're working on a really long piece of music, or you can do the full thing if it's a shorter piece. So they play, you play it at their current full tempo and they play it at half the speed. And if they are playing it pretty close to your tempo, say, no, 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 50%, slow it right down, only half the speed that I'm doing and maybe demonstrate one of the bars for them. Okay, now the fourth idea is a singing idea. I call this pentascale patterns. And this is something we did on the Kadai course I was on this summer. Wonderful, wonderful course. If you're in Ireland, give it a go. Or if you're in another country, look up your local Kadai society because there are, really are the most wonderful trainings. But I had an exceptionally amazing teacher. I've honestly never had a bad teacher there, but she was absolutely wonderful. Complete joy to be with. And one of the things she had us do, we're exploring all sorts of different things during the week, but one of the things she had us do was to explore the pentatonic scale. She had us sing different parts of it just to demonstrate how the whole it goes together no matter what configuration you put it in pretty much, right? So there was obviously a class there and you know we were in groups of two or three of us singing together, but you can do this with just two people, you and your student. So first of all, you're going to start off by singing the pentascale together. So get them singing it. And you can use the piano to back them up if you feel that they'll need that. And then ask them to keep going just up and down the pentascale. So that's do, re, mi, so, la. If you're not familiar, if you're not using solfa, no problem. You can sing one, two, three, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five. Or you could sing la, 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 just using the notes of the pentatonic scale. So they do the pentatonic scale. You set it up and then tell them, keep it going. Don't get distracted by me. And then you do it either at half the speed or at double the speed. Another variation on this is just to give them two notes to sing. So you get them to sing do, re, do, re, do, re over and over and sing it with them at first and then tell them, okay, keep it going, don't drop out. I'm going to sing something else. And then you pick a different interval to do. And you can pick anything because the pentatonic scale is magic and anything will work. So we did this in all sorts of configurations in our class in the Kadai program that I did this summer. It was really fun. So depending on your student's level, try different configurations of that. It's a great way to warm up the ears again because the singing voice is so related to the ears and I find when students are singing, they're listening that much more actively and it'll get them to sing independently of you. So those shy singers, they'll be so focused on the task and you'll be doing it with them at first so that they have that confidence. And the funny distraction of you singing at double the speed or something like that, that they might just keep going without any extra confidence boosters or prodding from you. However, if you have some extremely shy singers, I did 
do a podcast specifically about that. So I'll leave a link in the show notes. That's vibrantmusicteaching.com slash six four, just the number six four for sixty four. And I'll leave a link in this episode's show notes to that previous episode where we talked about shy singers and how to encourage them. Okay, so that's the fourth idea, pentascale patterns. Last one is rhythm echoes. And rhythm echoes doesn't sound very creative, but it is if you reverse roles. So this is how I suggest doing it in my book, Rhythm in Five. And I'm sure you've done rhythm echoes before. So you clap a pattern or drum a pattern or say a pattern and they repeat it back to you. But then swap roles and ask them to create a pattern for you to say back to them. Students love reversing roles like this. Then take one of their patterns that they've done and take it back to the piano and make up a melody to go with it, right? So you're making it that bit more creative. You're taking their little nugget of an idea and coming up with a melody together to make it really go together. And then you could get them to play this rhythm pattern melody combo over and over and over, and you could make up a little vamp to go underneath them, depending on what scale or what notes you've used. Okay, so those were my five ideas to start your lesson creatively. I'll go over them again just to review. So we had wordless improvisation, where you improvise without saying, well, we'll say minimal words, none if possible. Then we had the idea of listening to some music and painting the air to follow the melody together. We have the half speed relay where you play a bar of their piece and they play it back to you at half speed and you go back and forth like that. Then the singing pentascale patterns, great singing warm up for you. And finally, the rhythm echoes where you have them create a rhythm by doing that echo back and forth and then use that to make up a melody that you create together at the piano. I hope that you'll try out one of these creative ways to start a lesson. Just pick out one of them and try it out with all of your students just this week and see how it goes. And then maybe come back and try one more of them. And if you want more creative ideas and you want to make the whole of your lessons creative, introduce creativity into everything that you do, then you need to take my creativization challenge. So go to vibrantmusicteaching.com slash birthday to sign up for that now. There'll be daily workshops for five days as well as daily prizes for those who come along live and a super big prize at the end. I hope to see you for that challenge. Until next week, get creative. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode and that you're getting a lot out of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. If you're not a member, I just want to warn you that the price is going up soon. So you're going to want to sign up while it's still only $19.95 US dollars per month because as once you sign up at a particular price, you're locked in at that price for good. Go to vmt.ninja to sign up today. <laughs>